So um, obviously 2020 has been a crazy year and um, so many mums are doing quarantine and um, homeschooling and they're juggling their nine to five and they're trying to keep, you know, the house up and like running and they're trying to find time for their partner. What are your tips on creating boundaries and staying present and then also staying patient with the kids? It's so hard. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest challenges with this year is that there are no boundaries. Everything is just one big, blurry mess. You're home with the kids, you're working from home, um, you know, if you're, when, when you're balancing, when you're balancing homeschool, the childcare is much more challenging. If you had childcare in the past, maybe you don't have childcare available. Maybe you didn't have childcare because you had school and you didn't need it, and now you don't. Um, to me, it's really complex and messy, and I feel like there are no boundaries at all. And that makes it really hard. I mean, there's days that I feel like I don't stop until 10 p.m., um, you know, because the kids, you get the kids to sleep, and then you have to clean the kitchen, and then you have to, like, yeah. deal with whatever thing is left. And so it's just, it's really what I'm finding is that it's 24 7, and I, I think it's hard. I think. Just knowing that other moms are in the same boat as you and, and probably struggling. And not just moms, it's the whole family. I mean, you know, because if, if you're lucky and you have your family close by, they can chip in. But I'll say that, you know, I feel like I've had to lean a lot harder on my family than in normal times mm -hmm. to get through it because, because it is so complicated. And, and at the same time, you know, we're very fortunate that the, the, the things that I'm juggling are work and children and family and not having to deal with, you know, things, more serious illness and, and aspects like that. So, you know, and, and I know that's not true for a lot of families. So I think also just trying to keep perspective on what your blessings are, what you're grateful for, taking time to, you know, there are, there are other parts of life too that are more efficient because we're not really going anywhere. So all that time with the commute and, getting ready and going somewhere and coming home, you know, you, you have that time now to yourself. Um, but I feel like there's just, there's just demands literally all day long. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't just pause on the weekend, um, as I'm sure you know. So I think that's complicated and it just takes, it takes a lot of patience and, and kind of some days just saying like, I'm not, you know, the house is going to be a wreck and I'm going to drink a tea. And yeah. <laughs> Because if you're trying to constantly manage the house, manage your work, manage the kids, it just doesn't lead to anything, is what I find for myself. So, you know, taking those days where I feel like I'm, I'm pushing myself hard to do it all, but also when I, when I need a break, trying to listen to that and say, like, the dishes can set, you know, or whatever it is, um, so, that, so that you can. Because sometimes just making a cup of tea and taking some chocolate or, like, you know, eating Cheetos in bed makes you feel a whole lot better and you need to be able to do yeah. that. And being a mum, I think we put ourselves on the back burner. It's like, it's kids first. It's like, if you have a partner, it's your partner second. Then it's like your job comes third and then all these other things. And then you kind of come last. So yeah. as a woman, we put ourselves, well, I feel like I put myself last and then I'm the one in the long run. It's like my health suffering. I wonder why, or I've got no time for myself. I wonder why, but uh, do you have any yeah. tips? Like you said, having a cup of tea, it's even just finding those two Probably. minutes to yourself. I think you have to also just not be guilty, just to, you know, to be able to prioritize yourself a little bit ahead of the housework or the laundry, like the laundry can pile up and it's okay. Um, so try for me, it's kind of trying to find ways to prioritize, okay, I'm going to squeeze in a workout or, you know, like usually I take a bath at night and I have my whole like routine is more in the evening, but, you know, yesterday I took a shower and I spent 30 minutes and I actually put on makeup and I felt, you know, I got dressed. Like I can't, I don't do that every day because I don't have to do it every day, um, but there's definitely days at 5 p.m. where I'm like, oh boy. 
you know, like I need to really, this is not acceptable. Um, so I, I just think having, that right now you just have to have a lot of grace and, and carve, carve out for yourself what you can, when you can, but especially as a mom, and when you are working, there are so many demands on your time. So you have to be able to sort of say like, today this is, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna drink tea, but I'm gonna be my sweatpants um, and I haven't washed my face. Yeah. Of <laughs> course, another day where it's like, you know, getting dressed and taking a shower in the morning, which is not what I normally do, make, you know, makes me feel better. So I do think it is important to listen to kind of where you are and what you need and, and just, you know, maybe it's carving out 20 minutes to talk to a friend on the phone. That's important too, because there's a lot of isolation that people are dealing with. Um, or talk to a family member or someone else who's more isolated than you, because, you know, lots of people are quarantined by themselves. Um, which is a whole different type of challenge. So I think just sneaking in that little, those little bits of time and sort of saying like the list can wait is important because the kids are so demanding. You can't really, you can't really put your kids on hold. You know, like that doesn't work, but some of the other stuff, it comes with the kids, it comes with work. Sometimes, sometimes that's, that's the place where you could sort of sneak in a little time for you. Yeah. That's what I mean. And keeping active, not just the kids active so that they can kind of focus more, but keeping the whole family active is good for everyone's mental health. So like you said, you try and get out twice a day and try and keep the kids active. Yes, exactly. For me, I find that everyone is happier and in a much better mood and their energy is much calmer when we have, when you give your body a natural burn. And I think, you know, as adults, it's easy for us to ignore that and to dismiss it and just think, oh, I don't have time to work out or I don't have time for myself or, you know, that's not my priority right now or, like, I'm not ready or whatever it is. But with children, it's just so obvious to me. Like, when they exercise, and, and exercise doesn't have to be, you know, formal for kids. It's just getting them outside. It can be a walk around the block or, you know, getting them on a play set somewhere. Any place where they're, like, really when they're outside and burning and when, when we don't, I mean, our kids were literally like one blast in the house, um, you know, which is fun for about five minutes and then someone falls and somebody else, you know, something happens. Yeah. So it's like, even when the weather isn't so hot, I think it's a big, big help to get, to push, to push them to get out and to get moving. And if you can be a part of it too, that's great. You know, put on your sneakers, and get them on their scooter, you know, whatever it is, so that everybody gets some fresh air and some exercise. And I find it, it just makes such a big difference in yeah. all the moods and how we feel. But I do think it's interesting. It's something that, like, as a parent, you see it, you see it in such a different way, you know, the way that it really impacts their energy because they're just, they've gotten that burn out. And so I find that they're, they're much more calm. And as a mom, it's really important that we keep our bodies moving as well. And like you said, we can always find that 10 minutes to carve out for some yeah. fitness for ourselves, even if it's while the kids are, you know, doing their playtime or they're doing art or we've got them yeah. reading a book. Um, what would you, if you had 10 minutes to yourself and you really wanted to get your body kind of moving, what would you suggest? I would do, if I were in the house, then I would try to do a little bit of core work and a bridge because I feel like it's great work where you're on your back, you don't need any equipment, you can do it on the floor, you know, it really isn't anytime, anywhere, and it's good for your butt, it's good for your core, it strengthens, it strengthens your legs, like it's such a full body workout. Mm -hmm. So if I'm inside, that's what I would do. If, you know, when I take the kids to the park or play job, a lot of times I'll get on like the bottom step if there's like a little staircase mm -hmm. up, find something, and I'll just sort of do like a, a step up, like a arabesque almost um with a lens from the bottom step up where i would like put my foot on the bottom step and maybe usually there's a railing that you can hold on to and just bend and lift and lift i mean if you do that 20 times you change legs and then you know the kids are going down the slide and you do another two sets of 20 you're feeling pretty good so i think too even when you're playing with the kids you know you're picking them up when they want to be picked up all of them is great really great exercise because kids are so physical so I think that it forces you as a parent to be physical in a lot of ways which is good 
especially when you're creative about it and you're thinking, you know, when you think of it through that lens of like having fun and they love it. I mean, you know, you saw Bibi, the little one I can still pick up really easily. The middle one wants me to pick her up and I can pick her up, <laughs> but I can't get her way up high in the sky. Um, so they, they just, it makes them so happy when you can interact with them like that. And I think that's really great. You know, like Lena, it's way too big for me to lift now, but I can help her if she's on the monkey bars or, you know, doing other things. So finding ways, just finding ways to move together and sort of sneaking exercises in when you're with the kids, I think is really healthy. And it's a great, it's just a great example for, for everybody. You gave me a great tip. Um, we were talking about doing a class at home and um, I think it's really, really helpful for mums that are kind of at home and you had mentioned getting the kids involved in the class, but obviously their attention span isn't that long. So having art and crafts on the side ready to go. So that yeah. once their attention span runs out, you've got that for them to That's kind of... like between, you know, I don't know, 60 and like 300 seconds. <laughs> And then they're burned out. They want to move on. Like they'll do it for a minute. And you know, sometimes I think it's also timing it. My kids, so for us right now, it's afternoon. So this is a time when they're less focused. Mm -hmm. They can't they can't concentrate in the same way. But in the mornings, you know, after they've had breakfast, maybe get them dressed in the morning. That's a good time. Like they they're calm. You know, they're not antsy yet. So that can be a good time too to sneak in. Like if I have to do stuff around the house or something for myself, a lot of times I will try to do that in the morning because they're happy to, you know, watch a cartoon or read their books or play with their dolls or do something calmly where they're kind of playing together. Um, and I feel like that can be a good time too as a mom, especially if you're home and you're with your kids all day. Like that, you know. That's just the time when I feel like I, I can be the most productive because they're the most calm. And they're pretty different ages. You know, we have two almost five and an almost seven year old, but everybody in the morning is pretty calm, happy, and well behaved after they've eaten. So I think, too, looking at your schedule, you know, it's going to be really hard to do that at four or five o'clock. Um, and it's harder, you know. Sometimes I can squeeze in a little bit of quiet time in the afternoon, like after we have lunch, um, you know, sort of and what would have been their nap time is when they were younger, like we call that quiet time. And I might let them watch the movie or just read books and just have some sort of like calm, quiet time. And for me, a lot of times that's when I'll schedule phone calls and things for work. And I'm usually squeezing work in, but it's also a time of day because if you look at trying to schedule your exercise in those moments where the kids are calm and sort of quiet, that's a good way um, to get it in. Even 10 minutes a day, it's better than nothing, right? Absolutely, yes. And I think that's so important to look at it like that and to look at, you know, I try to even look at, like, the way we eat as a family like that. It's like any time we have any fruit or vegetable, it's like everything is like a gold star, you know? <laughs> like, if it's, if it's fresh and it's healthy, then that counts and that's terrific. And so rather than like obsessing over the things that maybe aren't as healthy, I just try to focus on like, great, you had an orange, you know, oh, the kids really love grapefruits right now. You know, some of them like, they like all different things. Each one likes a different fruit, sort of in a different way. But also when you're eating it together as a family, the kids are more into it. You know, if you're eating grapefruit, they want to eat grapefruit. Um, so those sort of things too, I think, Health is like looking at health kind of as a whole and and how you want to live. You know, it's not just modeling it for them, it's really living it as a family together.